Okay, welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty, the uh, number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is episode 38. Uh, in this episode, we welcome a very special guest. You know her from her iconic White Snake videos. Uh, she's a world famous model and actress. She's appeared in many TV shows and movies, including Bachelor Party, Eat the Cat, WKRP in Cincinnati, Santa Barbara, America's Funniest People. And of course, uh, the reason why she's with us here today, is she played Jerry's girlfriend, Isabel, in the season three episode of Seinfeld, The Nose Job. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Tony Katain. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure. So it was it was season three. Yep. Yep. Wow. Hey, let, so let's, Tony, let's jump right to it, right? So The Nose Job aired in November of 1991, right? Yeah. So, yes. so take us back. You had a role during that time. You were doing the... WKRP show in Cincinnati, right? Right. Love, right. love that show. So how did the role of Isabel come about? Did they audition? Did they come to you? Can you give us, I see a big smile there. What, tell me, tell us the story, how that came about. Wait, do you guys know, or do you know? I've, we we've, heard, heard, we've heard rumors. We've heard rumors before, <laughs> but our, you know, I think our fans really want to hear oh, it, for sure. I thought I was going to be able to get away with just giving you some kind of generic, <laughs> of how I got this role and you guys look like you're a little too smart for generic <laughs> and you're and you're a little your little snide laughs little to the side I can see the corners of your mouth going up I'm like these guys know these uh, guys know I'm not gonna be able to pull the wool over their eyes um let's see yeah I had to read for that against 500 other girls uh-huh. <laughs> so no, I mean, the, so WKRP, if if I did my history, you guys taped right next to Seinfeld, is that right? Yes. Um, we, we, we're in the studio right next to them. And, um, and to make matters even more cozy, um, mine and Jerry's parking, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? parking space was right next to each other that's convenient yeah very convenient. <laughs> and, and and jerry had a lot more to say about what went on in that lot than i did so i don't know how that came about but our cars got to sit got to park next to each other every single day on the lot there so all right so some small banter happened and one and then all of a sudden a phone call was made and um you know I mean, look, all right. Uh, I, I, okay, all right. So you guys kind of already know. So I'll I'll give you just a little a little backup, a little backdrop. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. When you when you shoot a 22, as you guys probably already know, you either when the network picks you up, you either do 12 or 22 episodes a year. We were both doing 22. Now you work three weeks out of the month and then you get a week off. And during summer, you get three months off and Christmas, you get two weeks off. So that one week that you get off, you, you treasure that week. It's like, I'm not doing anything else. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be in bed sleeping the entire time. Don't call me. I don't wanna do, I'm not, no, don't bother me. So I'm, I'm off. I'm on my way to Palm Springs. I'm going to go to the Ritz Carlton. I'm going to get in bed, order room service, and I'm not moving. The phone rings. It's my agent. I go, uh, you're not supposed to be calling me for a week. What's up? <laughs> she goes, um, well, you just booked Seinfeld. And I said, okay, um, when, um, when, when do I do it? And she goes, they need you there tomorrow morning. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So no audition was like, necessary, huh? I'm like, guess who's not doing Seinfeld? Okay. I said, I, I, I'm, I'm, I said, thank you. Tell them thank you so much for the offer, but uh, it's my week. It's my week. I've, I've got to re, I've got to re, you know, if I don't, if I don't take care of me first, who am I going to take care of? So, so she, um, she calls them. And um, she tells them, thank you, but no, thank you. And they said to her, well, when can she come in? And that's like, 
unheard of. Like you do not as an actor go, uh, I'll tell you when I'm going to show up. Right? right so, right, right. Um, so the table read was that, that Monday that they wanted me there. And I said, I, I can't make it back till uh, Wednesday. Like I need a couple of days. And I thought for sure my agent was going to call me back and go, you've lost the job. Think, you know, congratulate yourself. You don't get to be on Seinfeld. She called me back and she said, great, they'll see you Wednesday. <laughs> I'm blocking on block day. And I was like, you're kidding me. Like, I still get to do the job and I'm missing two days of work. I only have to work two and a half days on this thing. Are you kidding? And so they must have really wanted me some kind of bad to give me the, the, those days off and let me come in, you know, two and a half days later. Incredible. Yeah. So we, we, <laughs> we, Love we, it. we had the writer of that episode, Peter Melman, on our show. Do you, do, you yeah. remember, do you remember the experience with him? And I guess and we can get back to the whole experience of how, how you did get the role, but was he... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Was he was Melman involved um, a lot in the kind of the the day to day uh, filming? Like, did he kind of tell you the type of character he wanted you to be? Because he obviously wrote it. So I don't know if you could touch on that a little bit. You know what? It was written so well mm. that I came up with the accent. Ah, I was going to ask you I, that. That was you. I nice. Just, yeah, I just you know you have to remember like every day I was playing sultry Mona Loveland right so I wanted to stretch I wanted to go as far I wanted to make her I mean listen all the girls they hired were attractive so I knew I was cute so but I wanted to make her like I mean she she had to be an attractive girl but one that Jerry had to fight uh, with his, if we, if I'm allowed to use the word, he yeah, had you the can fight say his brain the and chess his match. Yes, the chess match between the brain and the penis. chess match, the famous <laughs> chess match. So I had to come up with, I had to try to come up with a way that that she repulsed him, but yet still be, you know, a cute enough girl to be on Seinfeld, if you will. Yeah, I and mean, that's... yeah, the accent was great. I wanted to ask you, so you came up with the accent. So in those scenes, you had such great chemistry with Jerry. Um, I, I, we, I, we watched it, you know, obviously several times, but today again, and just caught this look you give him when he, it's his turn to say his line because you're rehearsing that, you know, the scene together. And you give him a look, like a double take of like, you're, you know, as a character being like, wow, this guy can't act. And it was such a great, it was such a great look. I just, I just want you know, get your take on just shooting that scene. Maybe if there was any, um, you know, notes or any, any, any funny stories maybe that happened during the, the shooting of those two scenes because it's really, you could tell there's some chemistry going on there on the set. Yeah, um, you guys are so subtle. Um, yes, um, <laughs> <laughs> you're so subtle. Um, actually, you know what? Those are. I, I don't, I don't like every actor comes on here and probably says the same thing. They don't like to watch themselves. Mm. That was one episode or one thing that I shot that I actually, I didn't mind watching because that last scene, that last take that you're talking about, that got the biggest reaction from the crew, from the audience, from everybody. And I was like, it was one of the first times, although I had been working for 20 years that I really felt like, wow, as an actor, I, I, I just pulled something off really kind of cool. Yes. Like that was kind of, and nobody said do that. And so I, I just, I did it myself and, and I kind of, I mean, not to take away from any, like I said, the writing was brilliant. The scenes were already there. It was so easy to walk into but to distinguish her being attractive to him, but yet thinking he's not all there because, because that's what's so funny is he right. is all, he is all there and she was the one who wasn't all there. So to play the opposite of like her looking at him like you're not all there, it was just, 
it was such a fun, fun role. And that one scene in particular, that look, like I can watch that. That's one thing that I can actually sit down and watch and go, yeah, okay, that was cool. I like that. Tony, do you, do you do you remember the voice? Could you do a little like Nelson right now or? Oh my God. Um, I, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm going into um, Annabelle, my 500 pound pink cat from Eat the Cat. Um, um, oh, Nelson. Is that, is that yeah, like, perfect. That's like, oh, Nelson. Oh, you just, uh, I forgot what she said, but what crop circles? Right. Yes. Yeah, she was just, I mean, her voice, I don't know how he put up with her. I do not, well, I guess we, we found yeah, out. Yeah, we all know who wins that chess match usually, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I forgot, actually, I forgot who won. And I mean, I, we know who won. But I wonder at the end of the day, who won in that chess match? Mm. Like, was she worth it? Like that's what I want to know. It's that's funny, yeah. We we never we, we got to we got to ask Peter Melman that next time he comes on because yeah, that yeah. was never actually resolved. You're right. Exactly. We need to know was she worth it? Was she worth it? Interesting. We we you know recently we had um, the 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 costume designer of, of Seinfeld, but she was on later. She wasn't on the seasons you were on. She came in season five, but she did mention how she used to, you know, have to pick out the the costumes and the, and the, the dress, you know, for the guest stars. Um, curious, you know, the, were you able to come in with your own style? Cause you know, we obviously all really, uh, they, you know, strongly remember your outfits in that scene and things like that. Was that all you, or did you have someone helping you on the set with, or did you come in with your own, uh, your own attire there? Cause it was, I, uh, yeah, those were on my own clothes. Oh, is that right? Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah those were my, yeah. Very my, cool. Uh, over the knee boots. The yes, boots. The boots. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the boots. Yeah, yeah, that was all. That was, you know what? I am, um, I always feel bad when asked this question because those girls work their tail, I mean, guys and girls that do the wardrobe, uh, you know, uh, work their tails off um, doing that job. But I am notorious. I mean, even on America's Funniest People, um, they gave me a budget. I put it this way, there was no budget. I just got to go to Neiman Marcus and pick whatever I wanted. I And I still to this day love Vin DeBona for just going, whatever she wants. It's kind of like guy I'd like to marry. Like, whatever she wants. Um, and <laughs> that, was with, that was with the great Dave Coulier, if I recall, right? Yes, but I don't think, I, he, he, if he did get a budget, he didn't care about the budget as much as I did. <laughs> So, um, but I always, uh, like, even with Mona, I got to, I got to pick her clothes. And, and even if I didn't go shopping for them, I got final say. I always got final say in everything I wore. And, and, you know, I mean, it's a job I could do for someone else. I'm that passionate. Ask any of my ex-husbands, they'll tell you. <laughs> well, in fairness, to your point, like, you earned it, you know, you put a well your career is still going but you put together an incredible career so you kind of had that carte blanche right um so you met you mentioned that all the girls on the set were attractive it's funny like i felt like you were the first literally the first one and then they kind of like after you like that kind of repeated itself but like they kind of were subtle until they brought you on set so we, we felt like you were the first you know quote unquote attractive one jerry girlfriend and it sounds like it came about because obviously you guys had a little flirtation in the parking lot things like that um <laughs> it, it, well listen it, it, it's documented you guys did date right for a, a good amount of time and i i, I think i yeah. heard some stories where actually some of the concepts that you watched on the show were like real life interactions dating jerry is that true any examples that you could think of um I, I remember, I don't remember a, a precisely exactly the scenes, but I do remember where I was like uh, quite a few times, like sitting on the couch or just sitting on the bed, watching television and, and smacking him on the arm going, that was our conversation. Like, that's exactly what I said to you. So he would, I remember our first date and here I am spilling the beans. Um, <laughs> Where'd you go? Yeah. 
I thought I was going to go and cool with it. Maybe this was our, our meeting for the, for the show. Um, we went to an Indian restaurant and um, he was really quiet. And, and since you guys do the show and you've talked to a lot of people that know him, know that he is just, he's such a, he's an introvert. He's very, very quiet. He's very, he, he uh, observes and he takes everything in. Mm. And the next thing you know, your life is in a scene on the show. And, you know, and it's true when, when you know, everybody, I would sit at home and go, yeah, that's what he did. He would take things from his life and you make, you know, make something out of nothing and, mm. and, you know, make a show about it. And, um, yeah. So he, so he yeah. went, he went Indian first date. I like that for Jerry. Yeah, so he went Indian. Did you, did, did you, um, all right, you got the job. Like, did you, did you were you dating before that or like after that show and then for a, a good amount of time? Um, I think. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think that's how he asked you out. Got courage to ask me out was to, to get me on the show, you know, and, and because Jerry's, Jerry is just, he's not a womanizer. He's not going to be running around the lot, hitting on girls. And he's just got too much class and he's just is such a gentleman that he's not, He's he's using his casting director to to pick up on his his dates. No, he's um he's just yeah he's well, he's, not, he's not that kind of guy who's gonna nah, Jer- like everyone we talk to. Jerry's all class. That's what's funny. It's like you you know you were married to Coverdale and then Finley like kind of like rough and tough guys. And then it's funny Jerry kind of is in the middle. I don't picture him you know with you, but it, it obviously the chemistry from the show carried over. Well, you know what, and it's funny. I think um, um, David w- seemed rough and tumble because he was a rock star, although he graduated from Cambridge and mm. was studying to be a professor, just happened to have one of the greatest rock voices ever. And, um, and Chuck was um, something that jerry admired jerry loves baseball as you guys probably know it's Mm -hmm. one of his favorite sport and um you know i gotta hand it to him because he knew i was dating chuck and and chuck and i were on a on a break and jerry just went (laughs) (laughs) wow yeah so oh so you oh so you you're with all right so you were dating chuck in like 91 of those years okay yeah, I was dating Chuck. Um, we met in 89, started dating 90, 91, broke up. And, um, and, and really, I mean, Chuck's six, seven. Chuck's a big guy. Mm. So for Jerry to be like, I mean, I really had a hand it to him. He's like, I, do you know who I am? Not like in an egotistical way, but I don't care how big and tall and, you know, what a great left arm that guy has i can i can do just as well as he can Mm. you know and um and jerry is kind of right in between those two guys um in in terms of just i mean they're all three really good guys but i would have to say i'd have to say jerry is probably the sweetest and 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 the kindest out of the three of them and please do not let my second ex-husband hear this because he's the father <laughs> of my children and, and he will not be kind to me but but you, there's no denying what a great guy jerry is oh, Tony, we're, we're we're yankee fans so we you know we have problems with <laughs> yeah <laughs> so did that sweetness was that evident on the set i mean i'm just kind of getting an idea of i mean you had you were working on the wkrp show which seems like from an outsider that it's you know, kind of a more of a ruckus kind of environment. Those guys, you know, that's a fun show. We've heard uh, that Jerry set could be a little more businesslike and a little bit more um, uh, professional, if you will. I mean, what, what was the set like when you were on there? Was he in control? Was Larry David there? Were you, you I mean, obviously you felt safe. I don't mean that way. I just mean in a general sense, was it fun? Was it, you know, were, were they, you know, working with you as far as, um, you know, how the general sense of the set go? 
they were ve well they're very uh they feed off of each other extremely well like they can re and and i think any good writing partner you know writing uh, writing dual partners have to like a good director and a, a good actor i'm my director on Witchboard, kevin tenney the two of us we could just read each other's minds mm. and when you have seconds to be able to convey something because as you guys know time is money mm. you know you've you've got to be able to have that that uh shorthand and and larry and and jerry um they had that and so everything ran just so smooth on that set it was um very professional and what was interesting was um you you know how like elaine would have her storyline and and kramer would have his storyline and when when it wasn't your story storyline everybody kind of stayed in their own dressing room like no one really hung around the set and and watched you they gave you the freedom to do what you needed to do with without having too many eyes on you to feel like right. you know give me some space sure so that was i found that really because on our set we didn't do that we just sat back and watched and laughed and had a great time watching everybody but i would have to say they were uh very very professional so you've been you've been a part of some like you can call it iconic like cultish fan bases right from white snake clearly seinfeld we have a podcast about it um a lot of other things you've done like what are i'm guessing it's white snake but like what are you are you most known for or do, are you surprised that kind of the, the the seinfeld fandom you get even though it was just one episode and you've done like 44 of wkrp like do, do people come up to you about the seinfeld stuff um, absolutely, they'll come up about Seinfeld. Um, uh, the Bachelor Party, Bachelor yeah. Party, obviously people come up all the time. And, um, and Hercules, because I, I played um, his wife, Dianara, on that for a couple of years. Right. And that was, that was so much fun. I got to live in New Zealand for two years shooting that. Um, Incredible. But you're right, you know, you guys know there's conventions for everything. There's there's horror conventions, there's rock and roll conventions, there's, you know, uh, TV, there's movie. And, and it's like every single convention, I've got something in that convention that I can go to. Like I have Witchboard so I can go to the horror convention. I've got the White Snake and the Rat album so I can go to the rock and roll convention. I've got Bachelor Party and, and a bunch of other movies so I can go. So, so I have this really weird career of not being pigeonholed into like one thing. Mm. And it's just been, it's, it's, um, it's, it's been fascinating. It's really interesting. Yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's a really good point. I mean, you have your, you have a hand in almost in a lot of different yeah. facets. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, you know, you were on season three of Seinfeld. Now we're huge fans of, of season three and even season two. And we were got into it live during that time, but um, it wasn't so-called a hit yet, perhaps. Were you a fan of the show at that point? I mean, was it on your radar besides it being on your, you know, you're on the same set, but were you watching it? Were you into it? Like when the show aired, was it like, oh my God, I was just on Seinfeld. Let's everyone watch. Like it might've been if you were on like a season seven or eight episode where, or was it more just like that was kind of cool? I was on with Jerry, and this was kind of fun. Or were you like, you know, kind of immediate reaction or something like that? I I think it took years. I think it took years for it to set in and go. Wow, I was part of something that was really cool. You know, it wasn't. You know, I mean, uh, right afterwards, of course, it wasn't like wow, I was just on with Jerry Seinfeld because. I didn't know him as Jerry Seinfeld. Mm. I knew him as Jerry, you know? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, it, um, I, I, yeah. So like I said, it was only when it, it, it became such a phenomenon. I think maybe, what would you guys say? Like in the fifth, like the four and a half? Yeah, the content yeah. really on the map, which was season five. I think that's yeah. when it really exploded. Yeah. Which well, is shocking. Season five, I'll probably, when the contest hit. Four, that was four. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's four. I yeah, mean, you're right. Tony got it right. Four and a half, five. Four that's and when it really exploded. Yeah. Hamptons was five, which. Yeah. 
you know, I'll get in a taxi. Okay, so I'm aging myself. Um, um, and the taxi cab guy will be like, nose job. And I'm like, no, I've never had anything done to my face. And they're like, no, Seinfeld, nose job. I'm like, how did you, like, yeah, it's so crazy. So, so I mean, yeah, no, like oh, that. So that episode, like again, Melman, he's like the Mount Rushmore of writers on the show. Sue yeah. and uh, Dio was Audrey. Like, do you still talk with anybody? Like, do you still do you still have a relationship with Jerry in any capacity or Larry David? Like, any opportunities to get on Kirby Enthusiasm? I figured you'd be great on that. You know what? I uh, improv is my background. So I would, what I would do, I would absolutely love to get on that show. But, you know, I mean, I think had Jerry, I mean, and Jerry and I ended very, very well. We ended it very nicely. I, I had to come to him five months after we started dating and, and tell him that I was back together with Chuck mm. um, um, in a bizarre type of way. And uh, um, Jerry just, I, I, you know, like, I didn't burn any bridges, but that's like, it's an old boyfriend, you know? And it's right. like, like, okay, so is it cool with your best friend that he hires me to do another show? <laughs> I mean, so I, I I don't know. I think I was kind of looked at as like, from, from that group of people, like, okay, I was Jerry's girlfriend. Right. You yeah, know? Um, yeah. So, so this is, so when you, you watched the show after you were on and you stopped dating him, were you still watching the show as far as a fan goes? And if, yeah. yeah, so like when you saw him with other girls on the show, nothing like that. You were fine at that point. You're fine. You're, you know, I'm assuming. Yeah, I, was, I was fine. And I Do you have any favorites though of his onset girlfriends from the episodes or anything like that? Or anyone that you maybe oh. knew? No. Um, from the show itself. You didn't hear what I said. No, I didn't. I missed it. I was joking. I said, I hate them all. <laughs> um, um, no, I don't. I no, because you know what? I don't because he started dating that girl like a little bit after me, that girl, that younger girl that everybody gave him so much hell for right. dating. Yeah, Shoshana. He, yeah, her, and then he went from her, um, he was single, and then to Jessica. So he was, like I said earlier, he wasn't like hitting on actresses and, you know, doing what a normal, not a normal, but most guys who are like the top show, uh, you know, in the United States, in the world would, would, would be able to do. And that's just not Jerry's, not Jerry's thing. So much more respect for himself than running around trying to pick up on whatever was left over, you know. Uh, J Jerry's all class. Um, class. But, all class. But it's funny you said he was quiet. Like so, was when we watch his character, like on the show, he's kind of you know more outgoing. And what's the deal with it? Like, was he like that personally, or he was just more subdued and quiet and respectful? To your point. La the latter yeah very very much the latter well it's yeah. funny there's an episode like that in Seinfeld where he's kind of dark and mysterious and the girl is George's girlfriend is super attracted to Jerry because of that it's kind of bizarre oh, that you... really yeah I need to see that one it's, it's called the visa yeah um season four if you flip okay it I'm gonna have to check that out because I'll be able to come at it with a different perspective right and and, and that ought to be really interesting for me to see. Yeah. So, so it's funny, like you mentioned Tom Hanks, Dave Coulier, like a lot of these like Kevin comedic, Sorbo. Yeah. Kevin Sorbo, these comedic or big stars, comedic masterminds, like um, you, your experience on Seinfeld versus those others. What, what can you, can you shed some light on that? Or at that point, I mean, you're, you're only on for one episode, so it might be a little harder to, to Well, I mean, compare, I did, but... mind you, I did, I mean, I saw every single one of them every day of the week, except for that week that I had off or the week that they had off. So, you know, uh, you know, Elaine, Elaine, 
uh, Julie, uh, Julie Louise Dreyfus and I got pregnant at the same time. So we would walk around and, and you know, how, how's your baby bump? How's my baby bump? So, so it became, it, it, it wasn't me just coming in and doing an episode and then leaving and never talking to any of them again. You know, I mean, even when I got pregnant, when Chuck and I got pregnant, all of a sudden a guy would come up from behind me, throw his arms around me and go, you are the sexiest pregnant woman I've ever seen in my life. And I'd turn around and it would be Jerry. And I would just be like, you are the greatest guy. Like what guy does that to an old girlfriend comes up and says, how beautiful you are pregnant with somebody else's child. I mean, he, I sound, I make him sound like he walks on water, but he does. He, 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 does. he, he does. And we dedicated a show to him, which is great. Well, Absolutely. He well, you, and Tony, like your spirit comes through and your goodness. And we just really appreciate you coming on the show. We're, we're proud of you on many levels, especially like, you know, the great mother that you've been and like, kind of getting your life back together. I know we don't believe everything we read in the press, but um, we're, we're always pulling for you. And- I'm happy to hear you how well you're doing. It's just incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, check, out, check out the Visa season four. And we want to get your comments on that, uh, that Seinfeld episode, so. Okay, um, I will, I will. All right. Okay. All Thank right. you Sounds so much. Good. This was amazing. You know what? And you guys could not be doing this to a nicer guy. And I'm really, really proud of you guys for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. And Tony, love the headboard. It looks great. <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Have a rest of your evening. Enjoy your night. Yeah. Yeah. Get right. some rest. You too. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.